Welcome back to States and Kingdoms. Today we're talking about the Mothers of Invention, Freak Out from 1966. June of 1966. To be exact. Exactly. USA. You know, Frank Zappa is something that we didn't really listen to in the house as kids. You know, mm -hmm. like it wasn't something that our parents were actively listening to while we were growing up. But somehow I always knew of Frank Zappa, like from a young age. Like, yeah, I, I think so. You know, like he was, he was just a, a persona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well put. And the, um, <laughs> I bought this record. On CD. On CD. When you were young. And Sam Goody at the Broadway Mall sometime You're around... a little bit too much information. They can't go back and find me. <laughs> sometime around 2001, yeah. I would say. I'm not sure why I picked this album. I always went to the first album, always, no matter what. So obviously I, I, I started with this. But I don't know what prompted me to get this. You know, no one, like you said, no one listened to it. Because I was just curious. Yeah. And I, you know, I really enjoyed it. I, my opinion of it has not changed. Um, I, you know, I love mid '60s stuff. His sense of humor is, uh, you know, is ours. That must, yeah, I was just gonna you say know, that uh, is one thing that is uh, familiar and comforting in a way. There's a real familiar sense of humor and just a lightness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's fun. I mean, we're gonna go into it more, but I. With Frank Zappa, there's always this levity and this serious knee. <laughs> there's this seriousness uh -huh. and this lightness that are just... I don't think a lot of people can do that successfully. There's no, a few well, who can. Yeah. He's I, one of them. Well, you know, that, 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 um, that kind of brings up some later things, uh, sort of issues with Frank Zappa. That He's I not taken seriously. No, that I would have... Yeah. That's t Sometimes for me, it's too much. He went too far. Later on, it's, it's too silly. I can, you know, I, I can get, I can, it can get old for me at times. Um, All right, so you're a critic. I <laughs> dig. Okay. One of the things I loved about this album, especially when I did listen to later things, and um, even even absolutely free, is way more satirical than this. Even though this is, I mean, this is certainly it is, but it's it's far more subdued. Mm -hmm. And absolutely free does not hold anything back as far as you know, contemporary love songs and, uh, ev you know, just everything. Yeah. Hippies and... Kind of riffing on it all. I mean, it's, there's no question, you know, who he's aiming at. And, uh, you know, the music is absolutely brilliant. And, you know, and I do think that does get, it does get lost, especially for some of the later stuff. Yeah. But one of the things I loved about this album was that it was a bit more subdued. And you can just listen to it. And, and there is a lot of satire, which is... Fairly gentle. It's fairly gentle. Yeah. Um, you, I honestly, I don't know if you would necessarily pick up on it. I well, I did the first couple listens. I mean, you you well. I mean, a, a lesser man, not as smart as you, might not. I thought you said a lesser it. van. I don't know, like, like Van Johnson, Lester Van Heflin, Holt. Van Winkle, <laughs> Rip Van. Anyway, um, I uh, <laughs> you know, of course, the the things that strike you immediately are songs like who are the brain police and help i'm a rock and you know there's some really beautiful the return of the sun a monster magnet you know those things are i mean you cannot avoid them mandrake they are stunning mm -hmm. and for 66 you know i, I just can't They're imagine hearing the, this in june time. of 66 yeah you know i mean if you think about that period of time early 66 relatively early you know with just pet sounds in april and then Blonde on Blonde, and this, and these two two double albums, uh, you know, like back to back. I mean, my goodness. Yeah. You know, and this album, he, uh, he had, you know, so many people, they had no idea who he was. This is a debut. If we talk about, you know, debuts that make uh, or leave an impression, mm -hmm. make and one. leave an impression, right. this certainly does. It's cool, too, just thinking about how, you know, he was able to do this yeah. on a debut album. You know, I mean, there seems to be absolutely no musical freedom or any interest in anything unique anymore at all. Yeah, I mean... That's that, a different issue. Well, you know, that, that Frank Zappa was able to do this more so than even, like, you know, Lou Reed and John Cale, who had Andy Warhol they as had their... connections, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is just, 
you know, he got his foot in and then put everything in. Right. Um, you know, and, and was able to make more or less the album, you know, it's not exactly what he wanted, yeah. whatever. But still, it's, you know, it stands out. The the songs that are less... Overt? Well, the songs that are less experimental, you know, that, that, are, um, that are more poppy, you know, I still really enjoy. And I still, you still hear the touch of Frank Zappa on all of them, yeah. you know, as much as, you know, you have like doo-wop stuff, you have... Uh, like R and B, rock and roll stuff. Um, we also have his voice. Yes, well, you know? yes. Which he's... obviously, you know, he is a really great singer, and yeah. you know it's him though. You, you you hear that immediately, and that is one of the you know continuing threads throughout the album is like that that constant that voice mm. and him talking in the background and the talk, yeah. for things. I mean, it, it really does give it a, a another sense of like theming that's throughout. There are still some lines that make me laugh on this well, album. Yeah. Every, I mean, every time, every yeah. time. And it's not like every song has like a like a uh, like a one liner on it. No. And, you know, I mean, it's all balanced. No. Yeah, it's I, really good. You can enjoy it just as a rock record, and you know, a fairly long one. I think it's very balanced. You know, there isn't other than trouble every day. I mean, there's not a lot of. You know, Hungry Freaks, Daddy is, you know, like sort of socio-political commentary. There's not a lot. Yeah. So, and that, that does help it to, you know, it does it stay timeless. more yeah. timeless. If, if that's a thing that matters to you, and it isn't really for me anyway, because, you know, things I mean, are things from are made, their time. Yeah, they're made when they're made. So like this I video, don't know. people will go back and watch this video. This is You timeless. know, 75 years from now. and We and are absolutely timeless. At least, you know, a couple of people. I'll watch them. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. We'll go back and we'll watch these. Look uh, at those two jerks. Well, yeah, you said that you had come across some comments on, on like the forums and things regarding this album about how it was maybe a little, it was dated or yeah. it seemed kind of typical well, you know, Frank Zappa, mid-60s, Not whatever. everyone loves Frank Zappa. I understand if it's just not your thing, uh, especially later. I mean, because, you know, the... I don't want to say cynical. It's not really cynical. Never taking anything seriously. He's frustrating at parties. It's just not going to be to everyone's taste. And sometimes, like I said, sometimes I, I can get it can be too much for me. Okay. I'm just saying. And um, why don't you tell Dweezil and Moon Unit? I, you know, it's funny that because um, we always do this. Uh, absolutely free is to me more brilliant. Well, it has more songs about food. Well, sure. You know, even though it's a lot of that is definitely, you know, not at all subtle. You know, it's very funny. Uh, to me, it's always funny. But the, musically, it, it is Lovely. stunning. But I, I do think, you know, I don't, I think this could be, this album could be taken for granted or just not listened to at all, depending more on like which, which <laughs> side you're on. Because, I mean, there's no question, I mean, if you want to talk about influence, there's no question that, you know, the... Paul was influenced by this, at least. Paul who? Um, Paul Abdul. <laughs> you know, straight up, not tell me. You know the whole thing of Mothers of Invention, even Captain. The White Album. Even Captain Beefheart and his Magic Band and become Sergeant yeah. Pepper and his Only Hearts Club. Paul Revere and the Raiders. I, you know, and it's when you copying. listen to some of um, the Return of the Son of Monster Magnet, and I hear even like there are things uh, like when you hear the extended versions of. Um, Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields. It's like, it's like that, that sounds mm-hmm. like, you know. Yeah, it gets the was, same amount of like in there. cacophony. And uh, growing up, you know, huge Beatles fan, we read, read stuff about the Beatles. I didn't encounter anyone talking about this album being such, uh, being influential in any way in the mid, in 66. Well, that's one of the flaws with a lot of books written about the Beatles, that they're, they're no influences well on them at all. <laughs> you know, but I mean, talking about Pet Sounds... Blonde on Blonde, and, and and arguably maybe Dylan's influence had run its course in the Beatles, at least on John, maybe yeah. not George, but this. Yeah, this is definitely important. No denying that. But something that is completely, genuinely new. I mean, someone that is really brilliant, and, uh, you know, it's always special. It's just like a new road. It's a new way to do the rock and roll thing. It's an important rock and roll document. Sure. It's a very into- I love the album. Let's do it for for fun. Well, yeah, just the but fact it, that it's it is unique extremely doesn't... important. Yeah, 
it is unique and it is new and fresh, but it's also so complicated and well composed. I mean, you can't take that well, for granted. Obviously, just how good of a musician Frank Zappa was. Worked with great people. I mean, he knew exactly what he wanted to it, do. And it he does did hold it. together extremely well. From you know, the, from Wowie Zowie to a can happen here. I mean, everything is very well Organizing. produced and executed. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing you know loose or sloppy or no. thrown together about it. It all. There's nothing that sounds improvised. Is orchestrated all, exactly. So that facade of silly and oh, this is funny and you know prunes. There's actually a lot going on. Well, how do you sit down and, and how do you do what can't happen here at acapella or Al Capone? You write it at Al Capone. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, it's just, you know, I think there, there is, a, we've had, we've talked about this before where there, are, you know, if something's funny, people don't take it seriously. And, you know, a lot of great movies and, and great, great music can get shoved aside yes. that, that yeah, way. Yeah. And, you know, and Frank Zappa definitely has some of that. And it's definitely true. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about Ween, the same thing, you know, how brilliant and just because, you know, Even they can Beck, be funny. I think Beck gets a, a little bit, yeah, it happens. Primus. Primus for sure. I have not listened to everything Frank Zappa made, uh, but I mean, I, I will cont I continue to. And like I said, I mean, it's not, I'm not over the moon about every single thing. Okay, you keep saying that. I just want to make that clear to you. All right, Homer. Homer. I don't know, like, you know, like in baseball. Would, and would that be, not be a Homer? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I got backwards. Pinko. <laughs> Some of it I really do love, and this is this is one thing, because, uh, you know, that I'm, uh, this is really unique in his, his whole oeuvre. Egg. <laughs> no, really, it is totally, it's unique, because it is... More straightforward and and it's fantastic and you know if I I think I think most people would enjoy this especially you know if you if you like, like music music and you you <laughs> enjoy you know a little satire you like music with guitars and words that's great also I do want to this is not the mono and I this is one of those cases I really do want to hear the mono record uh, yeah the through. stereo version which sounded great it but does it, sound it'd, very it'd good it'd be fun to hear the mono version yeah. Cool. Let's okay. go look for that. Okay. Thank you so much for watching our brief discussion of Mothers of Invention, Freak Out. Let us know what you think of this album in the comments, please. And also like this video. And also subscribe to States and Kingdoms if you're not already subscribed. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.